What's up guys, of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your thrill, of course, the Scarender. And this is, of course, week 3 of the TBU, so if you want to follow the other people who are uploading today, make sure to check out the links down below. I am going up against Lorenzo, or the Swiss Curse this time around. Uh, Lorenzo is a very, very dangerous player. I uh, have a lot of respect for this guy in general, so I was a bit scared going in, and... Um, he actually didn't bring that much Pokemon I did expect, or I expected Diggersby, I expected Starmie, Bishop, and Nidoqueen, they were given calls, but aside of that, I didn't see, for example, Talonflame, which had me surprised, to be honest. Uh, Talonflame is definitely denting my team to some extent, outside of Dianchi, really, and um, yeah, very surprised about that, very surprised to see Gore guys, if anything, but Gore guys is actually not a bad call, but... Um, it can, you know, play my team. Uh, also, very surprised not to see me smash. Just thinking about it, but yeah, um, to get on the point really. Um, uh, be having good means that I can't really use my Alakazamus. I thought I would, and um, seeing his team means I don't necessarily need to get up my rocks straight ahead, or rather, I have no reason to do that because he hasn't any Pokemon that necessarily weak to it. Like myself, really, I don't have Pokemon that necessarily are weak to rocks. I'm using Drapion. Lando, Alakazam, Kubalion, Empoleon, and Dianchi. And my Dianchi can actually break through this team quite easily um, once I scouted out potential Scarfers and once, of course, um, the Stormy is coming because Stormy actually outspeeds it. They actually outspeed a lot of my team, honestly. So Stormy is a big deal. So Drapion's uh, Scarf set here is going to be super important. Um, outside of that, I guess if you want to know my sets and stuff like that, of course. May check out the link down below, which is going to be, of course, of the, my pre planning. But um, one thing I had in mind was, of course, uh, actually try to pursue Trap Stormy uh, in some fashion. I even thought he would start with that in Stormy, actually. I'll speed my whole team in general outside of Alexam and can finish him off quite easily. So that's something that I was really scared of going in. So I decided to start with Drapion to uh, pretty much dent it uh, at the start. That was my own idea. So, with all this, my guys. Let's go. So from the get-go here, I actually didn't have the, um, the situation I wanted. Uh, because he will start off with the Queen. And the thing is, I decided here to actually attack it. Because thinking he's going to go for rocks anyway. And I can actually, I barely live a uh, share for his life for whatever the case. Uh, didn't really, like, life for damage isn't close to taking out with, But it's not going to. So I thought I can be in an area of a 2 hit KO. He's defensive. He is actually defensive. So I can't kill him. So I have no switch in, I know it's gonna go for an Ice Beam, it's the safest call, so I need to actually sacrifice my uh, uh, Focus Dash on Tassadar the Alakazam, which sucks. It sucks a lot, but that's what was really my only switch in outside of Empoleon. Uh, now the thing is here, uh, I need to go for the Power Fighting, I know that it would be likely for him to actually bring Bishop to soak that Psyshock, but he brings Gudra, and um, yeah, I mean, wow. So Gudra looks like he's in a good position today because damn, I am not hurting that. He is back. He is back on track. I can't kill it. And I can't risk any damage on it either. I can't risk damage on Alakazam either. So I need to bring Dianchi. And he is going to pull an excellent double out to... Um, I can't believe he double switched on me. Uh, to the Auditor or of course the Bishop. And you know, I felt safe there. Sure, he could have gone for a sub. I know that. But at the same time, I couldn't go for Nerf Power, and that would have buried this up, then we'd be dead. So I decided to end away, go for Protect, uh, because I needed to do that play, I needed, needed to scout him. I'm not that weak to a substitute uh, Bishop anyway, so he goes to another head, that means that, oh yeah, okay, I get it. He's very likely to be Scarfed, I don't know that, but uh, I'm gonna assume he is Scarfed. Uh, so he's going to go for an Iron Head here, and um, yeah, that obviously hurts. And uh, here's actually gonna switch out, of course, fearing the close combat. So I haven't really confirmed that yet. But I decided here that you know he's gonna switch out. He's not gonna stay in. So I decided to go for a volt switch, and volt switch will do just about nothing. Should do just about nothing because it's the Gore guys after all. Now the thing is, my Dianchi actually to it kills it. I have a 93% chance of killing it. So I think you know that ex little extra damage should put me in a good range. But of course the lifters will take him back. Now I have some defensive investment in my um, in my Dianchi to actually live the talent flame, but these defensive investment will help me against uh, the seed bomb here really, really nicely. Um, seed bomb is not a one hit KO, but that definitely helped. Now even with leftovers, I am 
very very likely to kill it because my minimum damage is 48% the maximum is around 60% so you going down and luckily he does <laughs> that would have been unfortunate that shadow sneak would not have killed me either mind you guys just have that said so while it looked risky I knew what I was doing there I needed to do that play I needed to actually force out the gore guys or straight up kill it he had no switching for the most moonblast they are just annihilating him so I just go for protect here I really just want to see what that storm you want to do and um, show me skull means that damn it I need to bring Tassadar again Tassadar can live the, the skull even with life orb but it's close to killing him too um, but the thing is here that I can actually retaliate with uh, um, Shadow Ball. So now it shows me the life four, which means I can't outspeed if decided to stay in. So I decided that, you know, I need that dented damage on it. I really, really do. Uh, Alexam is not going to be a huge help with this game anyway due to the Bishop and whatnot. Uh, so Alexam is going to fall and I'm going to pursue Trap this Stormy. That was my whole idea. I really, at the amount of HP it was, I couldn't uh, just straight up kill it. Sadly, I am so close of killing it that um, the Pursuit Trap will not matter. Uh, and obviously he stays in, so I'm gonna invite Bishop in basically yet again if he so decides to play that game. Uh, but of course being locked to, to Pursuit is not nice, though obviously he doesn't know that, but I think, oh shit, he's gonna Pursuit trap me too, isn't he? But he doesn't do that, which I thought was really, really scary. So I go to 5-4, and now I know he went for a low kick. And while I can't take it, that also is probably, that damage of course shows me that it's not bad at least. So I'm gonna switch out here, because... Um, the only way I can fend this off is with Befelgor, and uh, of course in team they will actually be his defiant, but at the time here, I know he's probably locked into, of course, the, um, the low kick, which still won't do that much damage, and of course I have Rocky Helmet, so he's actually getting a lot hurt by this, and uh, I'm just gonna go for U-turn, like I said, I knew at this point that it was Scarred, why would he play that game otherwise, so uh, he's gonna bring the Shakuika, or Sharquisha, I screwed that up, aren't I? Uh, and now he's an amount of head damage where my Earth Power will kill it. And to really show you guys how strong my Earth Power is against this Nino Queen, I actually took his set and compared it to mine. I have the amount of HP he has, a, pretty much a 97% chance of killing him. And um, my god, was this unfortunate. Ah, this is unbelievable. He survives with 1 HP. Like I said, I have a 97% chance of killing him. And he gets the minimum roll. He survives it. He retaliates. My day and she falls to freaking bullshit. And I can't believe it. I can't. I am... Wow, I am so in awe of this. Because... I really thought, alright, we're breaking through now, we got the NC, we got everything going. But now I really I need to start working around this. I need to find a new footing. So what I need to do now is lock myself into knockoff, hoping he brings either Diggersby being scarfed or his um, Bishop being scarfed. Take off those scarfers if they does have that. Bishop obviously has that scarf. I need to do those plays. Um, I basically need to knock off the Bishop's uh, scarf here so I can bring Kubalion, finish that off, and basically from there find a footing. Um, there is a high risk for me of actually going into another set here, and I knew that going, or continuously going, um, that I can't really bring in Polion just yet. I need to save in Polion for his um, um, good ride benefit. So I'm gonna bring Five Horn and just gonna go for close combat. I'm just, you're going down. You have no switch in for this. Even if Gura could come in on this, it's not a safe call for him. It just, it isn't. And obviously, he doesn't know if I'm physical or not, but I am not, but I don't really need to be that this game. Now, he's gonna send in Diggersby, and I was thinking like this, or obviously, I needed to bring in Landers, I needed to shut down that attack. Uh, if it is a Scarf set, then I can actually fend that up with Empoleon. If it is the Agility set, it still can't kill me actually with an Ice Punch if it has that, and I can actually work around it fairly well. Now, he's gonna show me Quick Attack, which means that he is at least not banded, and he's at least not the Agility set, he couldn't be. Uh, but he's actually gonna go for a knockoff, and that surprised me a lot because he, I thought he would go for an ice punch. I can't survive the ice punch though due to uh, the prior damage, and um, he has actually no way of killing me, which was super super surprising. So that means I actually get to keep my um, landers, which I actually didn't expect. I was actually thinking he was gonna die through this matchup, and that was gonna bring a Kubalion to lock himself into close combat and then do the same to his Gudra. But that did not happen. Which was, like I said, super surprising. I didn't see the Digger Speed being 
So kind of wasted this game since it actually had ability of actually destroying me with the right matchup. That's why I had to this uh, this sets in the first place. So anyway, great shout to Gooder's gonna come and the close comment will do acceptable for not being invested. And it also also shows me that he is not invested that much in defense, which is okay. And actually will miss the fire blast. While that is unfortunate, it in the end will not matter outside of him actually being able to kill probably Malandros in the next matchup, but that's also not likely because Earthquake is actually a 60% hit on it if uh, he has no investment in his defenses and I'm neutral in my attack, but it's or um, I'm not boosted, but what do you say? I'm not like uh, Michael Ballon here being actually reduced in its attack, being timid at all. So, anyway, this game will finish, or Landers will finish this game off. It's, um, it was a very exciting match. I do believe that my opponent here, Enzo, had the first half. Like, he did some good predictions, um, started off really well, a good start off, and I really, like, my Alex Sam set was wasted this battle because I needed to work around it so much. But, um, I made it back and uh, he got you know, a minimum roll against the Dayenshi, which was really helpful for him because Dayenshi would just have um, ravaged his team completely. So a bit surprised by it, um, but at the same time it did make up for a really, really close game. So yeah, that's the game people. I guess you should try to define the last situation, try to explain to you guys what went through my mind uh, with uh, against the Diggers being uh, versus Cobalion. Now, I didn't know I would outspeed, um, because I didn't know it was Scarf or what's the agility set, but I knew I could do this. I could go for the Intimidate on it. Um, him going for agility would mean that uh, my Empoleon would have survived that, um, no matter if he went for an Earthquake, had he taken out the Kubali and followed up, uh, which I thought was really likely. And um, the way I was thinking was that I can lock myself into Surf, and then when Gura comes in, due, due to his set, I knew he had no investment in his speed, which means I could have already had activated my Pitaya Berry, which have boosted my attack already to 50% uh, extra. So Ice Beam would have do a whole lot to Gura, around 40 to 50%, and then both Cobell and Lando could finish that off. Now, obviously, he, was, he wasn't either Scarfed, nor was he having uh, agility, of course. So that meant that I could probably just work around it. I was trying to sack Landers at that situation, I really were, because I knew that I could just lock myself into close combat afterwards with uh, Kubalion and pretty, pretty much finish the game, but that didn't need to happen because he didn't have the Ice Punch, which like I said, I wasn't really surprised by. But other than that, I thought it was a really nice game. I, I play a lot better here uh, than I usually do, and I get, you know, I get the predictions right. Uh, obviously, the, the maximum output of the damage I made was not in my favor all the time, Obviously, the situation with uh, Nido Queen versus the Enchi was just outrageous. Since I actually thought that the Enchi is gonna be the MVP again and actually sweep through his team and look into his team, the really only thing stopping it was his uh, <laughs> his bishop. And since I had protect, I could actually scout where he was gonna lock himself into. So uh, that was really unfortunate for him, or unfortunate for me really, that I could scout him. Um, he obviously he needed the Enchi to go down to actually work properly, so I guess it works in the favor in this game, or out of game suspect, I guess we say, that it, it's good that the energy dies, because it makes the game much more interesting, but at the same time it was frustrating, because I really, I, I, I wasn't sacking the energy, I wasn't, I knew I would take it out, I knew I had a big chance of doing so, and uh, that was just, I was just unbelievable. <laughs> <coughs> wow. But on that, I really want to thank Enzo, of course, for this battle. I thought it was a really fun one. And it's always a pleasure going up against him because I do think he's a powerful player. He plays much more aggressive today and when he does last time of battle. So I'm um, definitely looking forward to seeing him in the future. I have no doubt that he will make it to the, to the playoffs with this team. He's a really good one. I just had uh, the better matchups today. And him not having Talonflame definitely hurt him. So, anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching. I hope you liked this spell. Of course, if you did, make sure to just leave a like. And make sure to check out the other uploads that come today. There are 11 more uploads coming up today. And they all are linked down below with the other coaches from the TBU. So, thank you everybody for watching. And I'll see you next video. Until then, guys, take care. Bye.